fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hunter Harry is the boy of fire. He brings wild animals back alive. He can capture lions, cause he knows he got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O, and you'll agree. You like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfast every day with delicious Cheerios and milk, and get that good go power. Then folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Sheriff Wyatt placed the outlaws, Lee Shacker and Rox McGill, in a cell in the rear room of the jail. As the sheriff and deputy walked into the adjoining room, both outlaws stood against the bars of the cell and watched. After a few seconds, Rox McGill spoke. Lee, I have an idea how we're going to get out of this place. Come over here in the corner so there'll be no chance of them hearing us. I want to tell you what the idea is. In the office, Sheriff Wyatt and Deputy Sam Rowland finished their plans for guarding the two prisoners until higher authority from the territorial capital would arrive to claim the outlaws. And you keep an eye on them, Sam, while I'm gone. And I'll get down to the stagecoach office and give them a message to send from the first Western Union office at Rabarici. You do that, Jim. I'll be back in a little while. Later, when Sam Rowland came from the office into the cell room with food for the prisoners, his eyes popped at the sight he beheld, and the tin tray of food he carried crashed to the floor. What's he doing? Hang it himself. What does it look like? Rox McGill had climbed onto the bench beneath the barred window of the cell and had attached the end of his belt to one of the iron rungs. The other end of the belt seemed to be tied tightly around his throat. His knees were sagging, and his face was becoming red as if he were choking. The deputy, unaware that McGill was acting, ran to the cell door. Character, he's killing himself. Take him down. Loosen that belt from around his neck and get him down from there. Oh, why should I? That's the way he wanted it. Let him do what he wants. You're crazy, you die. <laughs> he's beaten the law, that's all I know. Why, you... I like the idea. But... That's why I'm letting him do it. Well, the law says he's got to be protected till a just trial's given him. If you don't get him down from there, I'll do it. Look at his face and his eyes. Character, you're a fiend. A kill, a kill, stop it. Let me get that bell from your throat. I have his arm, Rox. What are you doing? Let go. If I had to hold my breath another minute, that's I'd trick, that's trick. Take his gun, Rox. All right, you'll turn him this way. Yeah. There, I have it. Help, Jim, Sheriff, help. Rox, give it to him. Yeah. Uh, he's out cold. Let him drop. Yeah. I'll lock the cell door just to make sure he doesn't get out. Lee Shafter locked the unconscious deputy inside the cell, then joined Rox McGill in the sheriff's office. McGill was placing a holster around his waist. There was another gun hanging on the wall. I'm taking that. You use the deputies. It's on the table there where I left it. Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah. I have it. Ready? Yeah. We go out the side door. Our horses are in the stable at the rear. <laughs> the 
haven't even taken the saddles off them yet. Yeah. Easy. Come on. Tonto had left the Lone Ranger in the nearby hills while he came to the town of Deserato for supplies. He was there when Sheriff Jim Wyatt entered and told of capturing the outlaws, Shafter and McGill. Wyatt finished his story. And it was lucky. Stagecoach driver was ready to take off. He's carrying my message to Cross Junction, and it'll be on the wire in three or four hours, ma'am. Well, I better get back. Say, Hank, you have my order all packed there? Yep, that's everything, Jim. Say, uh, maybe you better swear in a couple of deputies to stand guard with you and Sam tonight. Huh? Those rattlers, McGill and Shafter, escaped from better jails than the one we have here. <laughs> Don't worry about them getting away, Hank. We'll look after them. Maybe I'll do what you say. Later, though. And I'll see you. You bet, Jim. Lynchin, what can I do for you? Oh, me won't get order. Me have it on paper. Hey, what? The store owner ran to the entrance where Sheriff Wyatt had dropped his order and was reaching for his gun. Tonto was a few strides behind and heard the hoot beats directly outside. Hey, stop! Stop running! Right, you... No! I'm shot! I'm sorry! They got me, Chief! Tonto's horse scout was tied to a hitching post many yards away, and already the escaping outlaws had disappeared from the main street. But Tonto was concerned with the lives of the two men who had fallen. Let me help you. He was already stopping the flow of blood in the sheriff's wounds as the first of the men who'd heard the shots appeared. Hey, who got it? You... Hey, it's the sheriff. Uh, him hurt bad. You get doctor. Sure. It's Jim Wyatt. He's okay. Stop. Oh. Was hours later and night had fallen when Tonto returned to the Lone Ranger's camp in the hills. The Indian told of the shooting by the notorious outlaws and of the events preceding it, all of which he had learned from Deputy Sam Rowland when that man was found locked in the cell. Tonto spoke of Rowland. The deputy hurt bad on head. Doctors say him can't leave bed. And doctors say sheriff must stay in bed long time. Does that mean they have no one to take charge of the sheriff's office? Ah. Men start posse, but they not have easy time. Shafter and McGill have been responsible for a lot of death and destruction in this territory, Tonto. There's no one whose life or property is safe while those men are free. We look for them, Kimasabi? Certainly. Uh, we see trail outlaws make when they ride through streets. Were the hoof prints distinctive? Ah, uh, we know them sure if we see them again. Which way did they ride? Them go west, in the hills. By morning, they may double back or else they'll be far away. They know this country well. Um, we know country well, Kimasabi. Yes, and when daybreak comes, we'll start combing it. Tonto, it's the last thing I do. I'm going to put Shafter and McGill back in prison. It was dawn the next morning. In a shack far from every beaten trail and in wild country the few men knew, prospector Andy Hogan and his wife Lida were eating their meager breakfast. Hogan, elderly and weather-beaten, was his usual philosophic self. His wife listened with a feeling of resignation to his promises for the future. Ryder, I know how many times I've made you big promises in the past, but this time I'm sure I've struck it rich. Yeah, sure. And next year we'll take the million dollars and go out to San Francisco. No, Ryder, not San Francisco. Not right away, at least. First, we go and ride on one of them railroad trains. It tells about them in that Denver newspaper I got when I was in town last time. Such airs. Hear me out, will you please? Then we ride all the way hey. into the... Now, what's the matter with you? Why are you looking like that? There was someone at the window, a man. <laughs> You're seeing things, honey lamb. But I'll go take a look. You see, I was right. There is somebody. Well, he knocks on the door, whoever he is. Just a minute. Well, now, hold there. I saw smoke coming from the chimney. I was riding uphill a bit. Well, come inside, huh? Yeah, sure. Are you alone? My wife's here. We are alone. Wife, huh? Who is it, Andy? Feller's lost, I reckon. I... Where are you going, mister? Just a minute. Hogan saw the man disappear into the underbrush. The man returned in a matter of seconds. This time, there was another rough-looking man with him. I just went to get my fare. 
He was waiting up there in the brush. Do you have something to eat? Why, I reckon Lida can scare up something if it's eat you want. Come on in. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Pilot Pete can fly a jet. He's 12 years old and the fastest yet. He can loop the loop because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get go power too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. When the two strangers entered the cabin, Lyda Hogan's dislike for them was instinctive and immediate. Her dislike turned to suspicion when one of them, Lee Shafter, looked at a pile of dirt atop a table in the corner. Shafter spoke to his partner, Rox McGill. Hey, Rox, look at the stuff over on that other table. It's gold ore, isn't it? Yeah, that's what it is, all right. You hit a vein, huh, Pop? You keep your hand off that ore. It's something to eat you're after, isn't it? We want... Yeah, Pop, we want something to eat, anything. Think you'll be able to rust us up something good, Mom? Don't call me Mom. I'm no kin to you. Andy, I've seen these two someplace. Oh. And it wasn't good wherever or however it was I saw them. Oh, you never saw us. That's right. We're from down Texas way. Right. Uh, go ahead and feed them, man. I'll beat you some biscuits and you can have sow belly and beans. That's all we have. Lyda Hogan, grim-faced, began to rekindle the fire to prepare food for the men. She was about to light a newspaper taken from a pile of papers in the corner, when suddenly she stopped with a gleam in her eye. Unconsciously, she whispered, Lee and Rocks, that's what they call themselves. Ma'am, what'd you say? Did you call me? Huh? Oh, call you? Of course not. I was saying to myself, I ought to put Rocks Right, on. you cut it out now. Get those biscuits started. All right, Andy, I'll do it. You men make yourselves to home. I'll have things ready in a jiffy. <laughs> oh, just like a woman. How are things down in Texas? I get to town once in a while, and I get newspapers from San Francisco and Denver. The Lone Ranger and Toto, having left their camp at the first break of dawn, rode to the wooded area near the town of Deserata where Toto had trailed the outlaws the previous evening. The Lone Ranger studied the hoof prints. They are distinctive, Toto. But following them up through the hills will be difficult. However, we'll try. They're distinct enough at this point. Let's see how far they'll lead us. Go on, sir. Kimasabi, look to west. Smoke and sky. I see it, Toto. You think crooks build fire? Hardly. But if there's someone up there, it'll be well to find out. They may be able to help us. Come on, sir. Let's go. At that moment, the outlaws, Lee Shafter and Rox McGill, stood at the door of Prospector Andy Hogan's cabin, prepared to leave. That was a good meal, Mrs. Hogan. We sure appreciate it. Yeah, we, we sure do. Glad I had it to give you. Now, we better go. We have our horses up above. Come on, partner. I'm coming. Well, so long. Bye now. Bye. Andy, get inside quick. Oh? Don't say.
stand there gawking. They've gone through the underbrush, getting inside. There's not time to wait. Let go of my arm. Uh, what are you pulling that little iPad for? Craig! Andy, those two are outlaws. Huh? Outlaw? What's wrong with you, Lida? What are you talking about? I tell you, that's who they are. Lee Shafter and Rox McGill. Look at this paper over here, Andy. The one you bought a few months ago. The Denver paper. See? Look at those pictures. Let, let me look. Let's see. They're all gone. They don't have whiskers in these pictures, but that's the two of them, sure enough. Sure it is. I knew I'd seen them. Then when I remembered where it was and who they were, I became nice to them. Why, they might have killed us if we let on it. Say, are you paying any attention to me? I'm reading this article here. Lida, there's a lot of rewards out for them. More than $10,000 altogether. More than we... All right, Hogan. I don't think you're ever going to collect that reward. Come back. And you heard what we were saying. Yeah, we came back all right. I told you I was right about the old lady, Lee. She was wise to us. Let me see that paper. Don't shoot your gun. Here's your paper. And look at this, will you, Lee? Our picture's right on the front page of a Denver paper. I don't want to see it. What are we going to do with these two now? We can't let them go to Desperado and tell what we are. You don't have to be waving that gun around. Hogan, we left here before because our signal, Lee, that's what we should do. He was wise that your wife knows who we are. I wanted to take that gold you have there because it's rich-looking stuff. So now we'll take that gold and we'll take you to the place where you got it. No posse of miners from Desperado is going to find us up here. Where's your mind, Hogan? Might be worth looking at. And it's certainly a good place to leave you, bound and gagged. You can't do that to us. You can't. Get back here. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Nobody will hear us. Yeah, she's going to tell it all anyway. You, stop that you keep your hands off of her, you old good snake. Oh, pull away from me. Pull away. Oh. All right, Mrs. Hogan. I'll take a hand here. Let me lead. Come on. Old Ranger and Tonto were nearing the Hogan cabin. They stopped a short distance away in the underbrush. Look, me see hoof prints again. Those are fresh ones, Tonto. They've been made on top of the morning dew. What is it, Silver? What do you see? Come on, boy. Come, come. Come on. Tonto, over there. Two horses. Maybe the same horses we look for. The men we're trailing are down in that cabin, Tonto. Most of them are going to be right? Oh, why do we go down there? Easy, Scott, easy. Maybe them see us. Perhaps. But we'll work down to the side of the place, hoping that they don't. Let's go. Now, now. Yeah, see? We'll crawl the rest of the way to that window. Easy now. Be careful we're not seen. I hear voices. Inside the cabin, Rox McGill and Lee Shafter stood over the cowering Lida Hogan. Her husband still lay unconscious on the floor. Look, Mrs. Hogan, if you don't want us to shoot your husband, tell us where this gold mine of his is at. We can't waste time. Where is it? Who's that? I, I don't know. Uh, I'll get to the side of the door with my gun ready, Rox. I'll stand to the other side of it. Mrs. Hogan, answer that door. Say you'll be right there. I'll... I'll be right there. Go on, open the door. Ready, Lee? Yeah. Yes? Me come for Mr. Hogan. Uh, who told you to come here? I don't know why, Mrs. Hogan. Me, it's just an Indian. Yeah. What do you want? Are you not shoot? Me come with message. Hogan wanted it mine. Hey, Rux. Maybe we've hit pay dirt. Yeah. You come inside, Indian. What do you want, anyway? The two crooks, interested in the unexpected appearance of an Indian, relaxed the grip on their revolvers. Mrs. Hogan, tell him we're Mr. Hogan's friends. What happened to Mr. Hogan? Him on floor. The men turned to look at the inert form, unaware of the masked man who stood outside the open window with his gun aimed. Tonto glanced at the window, then moved fast. He grabbed McGill from behind. Hey, God, man, what the goose? Hey, you turn to sneak and rest. You didn't let go of him before I... Oh, you what, Shafter? The mask, man. You're slow, Shafter. Yeah, I Got that gun, McGill. You got the same. I got the problem. This engine's choking me to... Get away. Me, take gun. That's it, Tonto. Cover them. I'll be right in there. Lida. Lida, what happened? Andy, I 
don't know. I don't know, but are you all right? I think so. Yes, I am. Help me up. Oh, look now. A masked man coming through the door. Well, a friend, Mr. Hogan. Rest assured of that. Otto, bandage Shafter's arm. Then tie his wrists and ankles. Do the same to Miguel. Ah, What's this all about? I'll tell you later. Right now, we'll prepare for a journey back to Deserata. I'll get the horses belonging to these crooks, and we'll go. It was late that afternoon. A United States Marshal and deputies had arrived in Deserata and learned of the escape of the men they had come to make prisoners. Now, as they themselves led a new posse ready to leave for the hills, they saw a procession of horses enter the main street. Sam Rowland, Sheriff Wyatt's deputy, was the first to speak. It's Shafter and McGill. Look, Marshal, they're tied up or something. I see them. But there's a masked man behind me. He's holding a gun on the other two. So is the engine riding beside him. I think I recognize those two. That's old Andy Hogan riding behind on his mule. And his wife's with him. Let's find out what this is all about. Come, men, we'll take over out here. Within a short time, the two men were handcuffed and marched off to a waiting stagecoach. The marshal spoke at length with the Hogans and the masked man. The curious bystanders heard the masked man say, And, Marshal, it was Mrs. Hogan who recognized the outlaws, and her husband who held them off long enough for Tom and me to take them. They deserve the reward. We do? Oh, we don't need that reward money. We have our mind. There's enough money in that to do us the rest of our days. And I'm going to make Andy get someone to work it for us. We're going to take one of those trips he was always talking about. Uh, yeah. Give the reward money to Sheriff Wyatt and Sam Rowland, who caught those crooks in the first place. Well, regardless of what we say, the marshal's office will make the final decision. How don't I have our reward in helping as we did and in knowing that Sheriff Wyatt will live? Adios. Adios. Well, doggone, just like that. Yeah. What's going on there? As if it was nothing, he ups and rides away with the engine. Say, Marshal, a man like that must be something special. Why don't you keep him here and put him in charge of the sheriff's office? Oh, no. Jim Wyatt will be back soon and take care of Deserata. That masked man will be needed in other places to make sure that men like Shafter and McGill don't get the upper hand. You see... He's the Lone Ranger. Cause champions are made not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Getting ahead seems a lot easier knowing champions are made, not born. Take Eddie Matthews, home run king of the Milwaukee Braves. Let's talk about that early day when Ed was learning third base play. He practiced buzzing, how to hit, and chose the food that keeps champs fit. Wheaties and milk, his favorite. And now that Ed's a champ today, he still sparks up the Wheaties way. Yep, Eddie Matthews had his first bowl of Wheaties when he was only seven years old. Been eating them ever since. Talk about a ball player's breakfast. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Now watch Ed put that ball away. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger.
Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.